Well, yes, Governor, your, your book, True Gretch, is not your average political memoir. Mm -hmm. There's a toothless photo, stories about drunkenly <laughs> throwing up on your high school principal. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't? And getting <laughs> tattoos, recipes, a recipe for your grandma Nino's clover rolls, even a Spotify playlist. So tell us why you wrote this book in this moment. Well, one of the questions I get most, whether I'm traveling in Michigan or around the country, is how do I stay positive and optimistic in the middle of all the heavy stuff that we've had to navigate? Mm. You know, 22, 28 recall attempts against me in Michigan my first term, oh, yeah. a pandemic, historic flooding that washed out bridges and dams, and we had to evacuate 10,000 people in the middle of the night in the middle of the pandemic, a plot to kidnap and kill me. I mean, on and on and on. And yet people said, why on earth do you even want to run again, much less keep doing this job? And I think it's important to give people some light. So if you get a laugh at some of my exploits where maybe I knocked out my front teeth in church camp, <laughs> or I share some inspiration with you about my experience with the plot and how I kept my family together and, and focused and grounded, or if it's just some light reading and what is another heavy time, um, I feel like I've achieved my goal. So it's really more of a handbook than anything. Okay. You have, and it's, it's so much fun. Uh, but let's talk about that murder plot. Um, you know, <laughs> great segue. Dark Sunny. transition. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that transition. Um, leading a politically diverse state as you do in such fraught times has put your own security at risk. Um, and I think we were all shocked to learn how much risk. So during the height of COVID, you became the target of a far right militia's kidnapping and assassination God. plot, which you admit has not only changed your life, but deeply affected your husband and your two daughters. Yet you want to meet some of these militia members who plotted to kill you. I've got to ask as a former prosecutor, why? <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, one of the things that I think is a superpower, especially for people in elected office, is the power of listening, the power of asking questions. What can I do that'll make your life better? Let me learn something from each of the people and showing up in places where Democrats maybe didn't usually show up, in yeah. rural parts of my state, for instance. Um, but, you know, Picking up a gun and plotting to kill a governor is not yeah. a rational reaction no. in a pandemic. I want to understand what was really going on there. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can learn something that'll help me be a better leader or hmm. help me connect with people who are feeling unheard or disrespected in the world. Maybe I won't learn a darn thing. That's right. okay, too, but I want to try. I want to mm -hmm. seek to understand. And I know you've got the Ted Lasso believe sign back there yeah. behind the stage. That's all, seek, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Seek to understand, right? I mean, I think that that's the, um, you know, the, the ethos of what drives so much of the work that I do and why we've had such good success Will the Michigan. meeting happen? I hope so. There are a lot of appeals that are still pending, and so my attorney general, Dana Nessel, who's yeah. one of the finest in the country, has said, the time is not yet, but I, I look forward to one day having that kind of a conversation. Good for you. Enjoy. So, so let me ask you something. Let's talk about misogyny and sexism, because being a woman in politics comes with its share of uh, aggravation and double standards. <laughs> um, and uh, you say there are more men named John than women in the Michigan <laughs> State Senate <laughs> uh, when you served as minority leader. Uh, even today, you're only one of 12 female governors. Yeah. So how, how, has that, how have you dealt with that? I think it's, it's really um, a wonderful thing to see more and more women running for office. Let me just say, our numbers have dramatically improved since I first ran for, my, for office. Mm -hmm. I've got a cadre of eight Democratic women governors. They are some of my very best friends, and I'm grateful that I've got fellow females who are going through a lot of the same stuff. During the pandemic, I was taking so much heat, and I'll never forget hosting a phone call with my colleagues from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And one of them said, Gretchen, you're doing all the same things we're doing. You know, trying to keep people safe, but you take so much more crap for it. Why is that? And as the last word landed, he said, wait, 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 don't answer that. I already know you're the one woman in this group. Yeah. And so you're taking yeah. a yeah. unique kind of heat for it. It is hard sometimes, but I'll also say it is a gift in a certain way because when we show up and we own our space, it gives license for others to do the same. Mm -hmm. We stand out. And you know what? I love to be underestimated. Um, you know, yeah. under promise and over deliver, you take them by surprise and yep. you can win a lot of good things when you do it that way. Right. Yeah. Grab them by the voting machine. Our thanks to one of my favorite superheroes, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Her new book, True Gretch, is out now. And you know what, y'all?